So we tend to settle or arrange the sankhara, that's our attitudes, our ac- mental activities, psychological activities, emotions, determinations, what we're aiming for, you know, Sankara, which is the activator and the habits that it activates. <clears throat> so, not just what we do, but how we do it, our sort of impatience or our impulsiveness or our half heartedness or our distractedness, kind of way we get diffused over lots and lots of things. Sankara, this is the, you know, the dynamic. Pushes, pushes, push behind things, whether that's uh, ragged or scattered or forceful or flickering. So the sense of committing, committing, simplifying, committing. This is a kind of, you know, basic meditation mudra, posture, not just physical, but you know, psychological or mental, it's that just like you, you sit, you sit, you walk, you walk. <laughs> and when you, so that's what you do with your body, so with your mind, you commit to this. Yes, yes, it simplifies. So you're making a reasonable a commitment that you can have some faith in or some trust in. It's not about belief, it's not about, you know, uh, brainwashing yourself, it's commitment to be awake to clarify, to know, to understand, to release. Do what we need to do, stop doing what we don't need to do. Perhaps that, just that, you know, is a useful enough motto to slogan to have how to meditate, just when you sit, do what you need to do. What you need to do, do it fully. What you don't need to do it, don't do it. <laughs> what you don't need to do, just um, and of course it takes a little, that takes some finesse because a lot of things we don't really need to do or want to do, but the mind just seems helplessly dragged in to machinations and manipulations and doubts and if. Uh, regrets and ambitions and ideologies and beliefs and you know where's it all going now what's the feeling of that what's the how's that sit with you if your mind is sort of heaving and scattering and wavering and niggling you know is it just just get down to being in the body breathing in breathing out just being in the body just you know, that aim to unify. Mm. <clears throat> so we can, you know, we just do this for a a week, you know, or an hour, a day. Yeah. And get a sense of yeah, that was that was good. It was a struggle. It's good. Glad I did it. Mine didn't want to do it. Came up with all kinds of reasons why I didn't need to, shouldn't have to, but <laughs> useless waste of time. But you did it. At the end of the day, you think, oh, that, that was good. Because there's some sense of a strengthening and a deepening and, uh, you know, less captured by the thoughts and the psychologies of the mind, the person. Thoughts of psychology so that become the person. Yeah. Take your time take our time, don't we? But we can say I can do this for a day anyway. For a week. Feel out get the results. Check it out for yourself. The clarity, simplicity feels good. It feels good, it's feeling good in a kind of quiet, 
invigorated way, feels good in a calming way. The lessening of mental activity feels good. This is the feeling that arises from skillful intention. It's not a feeling that arises in the body, although actually in due course with time, even the body starts to feel good through that. As if you carry, if you focus on that intentionality and breathe and capture the quality of that, it starts to infiltrate your body and your body begins to get zestful and bright and energetically clear. It won't happen if one's mind is going, well, maybe, but then again, you just get, it just tangles, makes things muddy. Feeling is very significant. Mm. Vedana. So feeling is just the sense of agreeable or disagreeable. And uh, the saying is, all things converge on feeling. In the in the uh, numerical discourses, Book of the Tens, fifty-eight, I think. Uh, it's a really interesting progression. Um, touched on it last night. Mm. All things, all dhammas, uh, are rooted in chanda, interest, motivation, desire, good or bad, skillful or unskillful, some kind of inclination, in interest, uh, towards becoming, towards non-becoming, towards sensuality, mm. for good or for bad. And so meditation is called the best kind of becoming. It's a good kind of becoming that can lead to the end of it. But you can't really aim for that, because actually the end of becoming is the ending of aiming. <laughs> yeah. So you aim to bring around those factors that will help becoming to dismantle this kind of sense of time and progress and identity and getting somewhere. You have to start to get somewhere to find out there's nowhere to go, no need to go. Motivation. So meditation is not, you know, the answer or just focusing is not the answer, but it's certainly necessary for the answer to unfold. All things coming to becoming into through attention, something frames up. Something frames up uh, how we are, where we are, who we are. Something selects and chooses and frames up. Yeah. Today is this day. It's so I'm so down a retreat. Uh, I'm this kind of. This is what I need to do. Something kind of frames up. You know, we deliberately frame up. Focus on the body. That's a that's a conditioning element. So suddenly we we are beginning to experience a world that's based upon bringing attention into the body could be bringing attention to the mind. A lot of the time attention is just grabbed. You find yourself framing up the future, framing up the past, framing up the people, framing up how it should be, framing up how I should be, framing up what we're not, framing up what we are. You know, actually constantly, the kind of involuntary it, grabbing of attention forming these Things that we then absorb into or get thrown around in. Framing up. Manasikara. So you actually will get a hold of that. Frame up something that's you know, not going to be shifting and changing all the time. And subject to opinions and views and people and events. Just frame up something. Present. Body. Breathing in, breathing out. Still it's, you know, it's not deathless, but it's a lot steadier than 
time and place and circumstance. Bring yourself into this realm of becoming. All things well up, originate, come welling up based on contact. Contact is the experience of something making an impression on us. Something impressing itself, pressing into us, touching us, the signaling. Mm -hmm. Contact, something switches on. Oh, yeah, suddenly we're into something that's got some, it's not just neutral, it's something that, you know, as you meditate, things start, buttons start getting pushed. That's contact. We have lift off. We lift off into our, either into our karmic configurations and mental activities, or we make contact with something like breathing in and breathing out, and you start to go into that, and that starts to lift. And that's a hinge point. It's the what's going to come up afterwards. All things well up through contact, originate, come forming themselves through contact. What are you going to contact? How are you going to contact it? Make, making a choice. These are yeah, because if you don't, it's not like you're neutral, then your mind's going to make contact with things that, any old stuff really, probably unresolved, niggly things, problems, aims, it's not going to contact the deathless by it, in, in an involuntary way. <laughs> so, you know, it's not like you either can make skillful or unskillful it's not like there's a neutral ground of no contact it happens all things everything world comes arising through contact so then you what do you not want to make contact with what do you want to say enough of that you keep pushing that button you know what's going to happen you know kind of spin Grumble, crave, doubt. All things well up through contact, all things converge on feeling. That is what really grabs us, is not reason but feeling. We may speculate about rationality, we obey feeling. Pain we obey. It does pleasure we obey you know the mind goes for it or runs away from it yeah. so that's you know, all things are led by headed by concentration think the mind comes to the one pointedness on what is being felt for good or for bad so let's make it something that's useful the kind of feeling that arises from skillful intention, from a skillful abiding, so say body breathing in and out is an agreeable, mild but agreeable, not the thing that the mind goes to instinctively. It's subtler, it's not so coarse, it's not spicy and strong, but it is staying with it. It's a mild, easy, pleasant source of pleasant feeling. Just as helpful to just to really reflect upon, bear in mind, you know, intentionality has a feeling associated with it. So we notice with the hindrances, say, you know, sense desire would seem to be attractive. You know, we think of something that attracts and delights us. Mm -hmm. The sanya, the perception, delightful, agreeable, pleasing. Oh, great, yeah, that's great. Oh, wow, right, great. But notice the sankara, the feeling of being dragged towards it. Time and time again, dragged into it, spun around with it, set on fire by it. Stretching out for it, reaching out for it. Yeah, what's that feel like? You contemplate the, the sankara of of sense desire, it's rough. The Buddha likened it to a leper scratching his sores, 
cauterizing his wounds. You get this momentary sense of relief and then it starts to itch again. <laughs> and so then you know the lepers get together and have a party and scratch each other's sores. <laughs> get some momentary relief. Yeah, so there is momentary relief. Uh, sense pleasure and yet itch, 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 scratch it again. So, you know, when you meditate and you get caught in these, you just feel the kind of nagging, hungry dog feeling of, of sense desire. You think, oh, this is rough. And, you, know, and you just use whatever you can, bitter medicine, to, to get the mind off it. Mm -hmm. And it's training oneself to focus on the simple, the clean, you know, clean breath, simple space, simple movement. It's not strong Vedana in itself in terms of sensation, but the mind state and intentionality is clean, bright, doesn't burn you out. It's like clean water rather than whiskey. And the mind has to be, you know, brought back to that again and again, you know, because it doesn't, you know, it's 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 addicted. Just the relief of the mind not caught in craving. For a half a minute, a minute, periods of the day. Wow, you can actually be receptive and open and feel fresh instead of stuck in some spinning maelstrom. The feeling of pleasant, agreeable sankara, intentions, motivations and mental states. All things converge on feeling. We have no choice. All things converge on feeling. You know, that's the point. There's a feeling we get from having our own way, the feeling we get from being in control of things, the feeling we get from taking a rest, the feeling we get from reading a book, the feeling we get from seeing the sunshine, the feeling we get from pleasant company, it's the feeling that gets us. And you've got to unravel what feelings arise associated with skillful sankhara, skillful intentions, skillful mind states, and what don't. And one will have a calming, peaceful, uh, brightening sense, the other intoxicates. And it's unsatisfying. You never get enough. Uh, that's what the mind aims for. It's what it concentrates on, whether we choose it to or not. So we're trying to make a choice towards concentration on agreeable feeling that comes born of agreeable contact and agreeable intention. All things are dominated by mindfulness. Mindfulness exercises authority over them. And this is a powerful statement. All things, mindfulness exercises authority over all dhammas. Because mindfulness supports the non-proliferation Instead of the mind being allowed to keep adding, weaving, analyzing, subtracting, dividing, multiplying, it's just stay with it. It's bear it in mind as a phenomenon, not as self. So mindfulness is that ability to, to 
to make objective that with those experiences that normally seem to be creating me or myself or mine this is the feeling this is the mind state it's this way it's caused as effects just holding it like that it's not something that is a magical wand that turns everything into happiness and light but it checks the proliferations be with the feeling you can't get it much simpler than that be with the feeling you know, the feeling if it's felt as a just as Vedana as pleasant unpleasant and sustained in that this is a feeling we're not allowing it to generate more perceptions and sankharas it, you know, so normally you experience a say a unpleasant particularly of mental feeling feeling bored feeling restless these are actually not feelings they're sankharas these are, so the English word tends to blur but sankhara is their kind of stirring bored restless fed up not getting anywhere been through this feeling stale for enough of this stuff of stuff okay yeah sure yeah, yeah, sure, that's true. Um, so, should, why, why do things, what do you expect? This is one of the ranges of mental states. Things get boring, things get stale. Uh, if you're restless, feel edgy. If you're not good enough, not enough, want more. Normal, not really something that one should uh, get alarmed about or resentful about or despondent about. It's just the way the mind behaves. It's not getting new food. It starts to grumble. Yeah, we could continue on that trajectory. What we're going to do, how we're going to make it this way, that way, do this, that, and the other. Or we could just this is part of life part of the mind's life anyway the unenlightened mind I don't think Buddhas get bored in sitting around all day they don't get seen to get bored <coughs> the Arahants don't get bored I mean, kind of like in his, you go through these discourses and the Arahants are saying the same thing to each other you know somebody's sitting in Uruvela and psychically beams over to some arahant in Samadhi saying, are the aggregates permanent or impermanent? And the other one says, impermanent, even so. I've heard this before, surely. <laughs> what about Spadar? Is it permanent or impermanent? Impermanent, <laughs> right. Like sending psych you know, psychic emails to each other. <laughs> you know, Why are you saying this? I've heard it before. Obviously they're not bored, but they're still delighting in it. <laughs> Same old thing. <laughs> you know, it'd be great if one of her aunts said, Oh, I found a permanent sanya. <laughs> and all the other her aunts would gather around and start arguing about it. <laughs> so it's just the same thing, but that's okay. It's okay. So the kind of, you know, it's that. Yeah, you know, we may, in fact, the mind may feel like a pleasant feeling instead of a neutral feeling. Neutral feeling tends to totter towards the um, pleasant if we enjoy calm, or it feels disagreeable if we seek stimulation. Just whatever it is, just hold the feeling as a feeling. It's okay to feel unpleasant, but... Uh, it's seen, this is a feeling, not a person. Not a personal problem, not a personal possession, not a personal belonging. Everyone has these. Just hold it steady and check the catching fire. 
Hold it in the body, breathing into it. It's tremendously uh, powerful, the power of feeling, the energy that goes. Feeling is sankhara is form, fabricated. The body generates it. Amazing ability, the body to generate pain. <laughs> it's just doing nothing with it. It starts to... <laughs> starts to reduce pain. What have I ever done that? Why did you do that to me? <laughs> and the same thing with the mind. You know, it's the ability to generate unpleasant feeling. Out of nothing, really. Or the unpleasant feeling of not enough, the unpleasant feeling of too much, the unpleasant feeling of wanted this instead, the unpleasant feeling of, you know, whatever. Uh, there's energy in that that's that's being sankara that's fabricated now when it, we just held that all that energy becomes available instead of spinning out into useless sankaras of proliferation and grumpiness and you know the raw power the vedana of the sankara instead of it just going that way and it's like um, some of this exercise we can do in Qigong where you're just, just holding your arms out and you feel this tension build up. You can focus on it and instead of resisting the tension or waiting for it to go away or trying to relax it, just focus on it and relax the mind's attention around that. It becomes softer, wider and the tension changes into heat. An amazing kind of luminous and radiant quality that you have. Holding it, holding the feeling as feeling. All things are supervised by wisdom. Wisdom can survey and supervise it all. Mindfulness is the operation, the exercising authority, wisdom, cleaning the results. Feeling is just like this. That mental pattern that you're experiencing is doing you harm. That mental pattern you're generating is for your welfare. Get it, you know. Instead of believing in the narratives, just look at what the narratives do to you. The feet through letting, just getting down to the feeling of it, bearing that in mind, and the results. Liberation is a process of transmuting all kind of complex mentalities. It's a simple feeling and, and then the release from the sankara, from further formations around that. Mm. All things have liberation as their core. All things have liberation as their core, as their essence, sara. Amazing statement. All things, all things, all dhammas essentially liberate and this is uh, something it's quite something to try and get your head around <laughs> but it does mean <laughs> if, if you hold them with mindfulness and supervise them with wisdom they'll start to liberate from self from proliferations from intoxication from further becoming, yeah, from all that stuff that makes life so dense, empty. Let me notice you know, that I've been suggesting time to time notice the 
absence of difficult. Mm. Like in the Sunyata, Chula Sunyata Sutta, where the Buddha says, you go to a forest, you notice the absence of villages with all the hoo-ha and hubbub that goes on in villages. You know, those days drums and trumpets and crowds, nowadays it's traffic and music. And notice that, notice the absence and you're free of that now. Dwell in that. Mm. When things are seen as they are, there's no, there's no future to them. Craving without a future doesn't last long. Craving always postulates a future when I could get what I crave. When you realize truly that right now when you're experiencing it, there is no future, there's just this. What happens to craving? Investigate. What happens to resistance when the thing that we are keep bringing in, keep remembering to feel annoyed about? What happens when we just don't bother to bring that in? What happens to resistance? What happens to the you know, grudges or problems we can experience about other people when you don't keep creating them in the mind? Notice they're not here. How's that? In the simplicity of dhammas, dhammas as they are, the whole kind of uh, mesh of samsara breaks open. It's like a mesh of causes and conditions. They're always remembering, postulating, hypothesizing, preferring, manipulating, kind of this weave of memory, perception, impressions, assumptions, futures, past, myself, other people, all meshing together to create something so dense it starts to throttle the mind. What happens if we just come back to the feeling, you know, stabilizing the feeling, holding, sustaining mindfulness, contemplating the feeling, breathing into the feeling, and carefully investigating what happened to the world. All things merge in the deathless, all things terminate, have their culmination and consummation in Nibbana, the unplugging, the non-burning, the non-blowing on. This is a tremendously powerful, cryptic um, med- um, wisdom teaching. The Buddha just presents it like that, no explanation, just take those pieces, chew them over. Take one piece, chew it over. You get a lot out of it. That's Buddha Dhamma. But certainly from my own recommendation, my own practice, it's really trying to get the complexities down to just this, the one point that's, that's digging, tickling, enticing the heart. The Vedana and the Sankara that sprouts around it, and how it squirms and wriggles like a snake. You have to hold the snake carefully right behind the head, otherwise, it's going to bite you. But once you hold it carefully, you can defang it.
things converge on feeling dominated by mindfulness supervised by wisdom having liberation as their core what a beautiful teaching <laughs>